Thanks for joining us for What's New at CFI, where we bring you insights from our latest courses and behind the scenes conversations with subject matter experts. Get ahead and stay ahead with the latest from CFI. Hello and welcome to the What's New at CFI podcast. I'm Asim Khan, joined by my colleague, Duncan McKean. Welcome, Duncan. Thanks very much, Asim. It's been a pleasure speaking with you these days about the FP&A course you put together. We have the opportunity to speak about the financial statement aggregation and analysis course that you recently put together. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the main the main purpose of it is to really do two things. Um, one is pulling the financial statements together. And in this model, there's an income statement and a cash flow statement. And then the other main thing that we're really looking to do in the course is up until this point, we've been building everything on a monthly basis and we've been forecasting 24 months into the future. And um, what we're going to do in the course is start aggregating up by quarter and by year over in a different tab in the model using some interesting aggregation functions in Excel. So we, we've seen uh, in previous iterations how you had a revenue forecast and a cost forecast. Mm-hmm. And I, I presume those roll down into the uh, forecast income statement, correct? They're definitely going to, yeah, they're definitely going to link into the income statement that we'll be doing this course for sure. And um, we also put together a tax schedule near the beginning of this course. And um, all important. Always important. Never a fun subject, let's just say that. But um, I think a subject that maybe a lot of people, it's fair to say a lot of people struggle with, or sometimes they understand taxes, but they struggle with how to model them. I've definitely seen people overdo taxes and all of a sudden you get like 600 rows in a model of tax calculations. Or sometimes, in fact, sometimes it's more common to see tax calculations just being too simple, like just showing, say, total tax. And what we want to do here is really stress the importance of breaking out the current and the deferred income taxes is really the key we need to break up the current ones because they're they're cash taxes, they're cash outflows, and you know if we need to evaluate the health of the company from a cash perspective, then that's that's a critical piece in the calculation. Do you find that people have trouble with the concept of deferred taxes? Yes, definitely. Um, something that that people often struggle with. Now we generally talk about them, like really the key, the two main taxes for us to calculate here are that really the total tax, which is going to go to the income statement and give us a, a meaningful measure of profit. In the current taxes, which will go to the cash flow statement and allow us to evaluate the company's cash flow. But definitely people struggle with the concept of, of deferred taxes, like non-cash taxes is something that people are often like, well, what do you mean non-cash taxes? And what does that even mean? So in some of our other courses, it's in our operational modeling course, we actually go through we go through really detailed um, explanation of, of how those work. And it's a great course on learning how to build all of the operational schedules. And by that, I mean really um, all of the schedules that you'd need to know how to build in a financial model that that don't involve capital structure. So there's no there's no debt modeling, there's no equity modeling in that operational modeling course, but it's, it's a great course to learn how to build things like a working capital schedule or um, depreciation schedule, you know, income tax schedule, all these peripheral schedules that you really need to know. That's excellent. I'm sure people will become quite handy with taxes once they've gone through this course. Mm -hmm. Um, I found the explanations super easy to follow, and I I believe others will as well. So the model, as you've set it up, it covers a two-year forecast period, Mm -hmm. um, but it's expressed monthly, so there are 24 periods. Yep. And um, by aggregation, I guess this is where aggregation comes in. Could you tell us what what Mm -hmm. that means? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but yeah, by aggregation, what we're really saying is, you know, let's 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 sum everything up into quarters and let's sum everything up into years, so we can see it in that context as well. And I think it's fair to say that one of the common things that that we see with financial models, and it, it's very typical, is that um, people often will model four quarters, let's say four columns, you know, and each each one is a quarter, and then they'll sum into a year. Really common. And then the next column will be Q1 of the of the next year, Q1 through four, and then we'll sum into the next year. And it's a really common structure, but it's very problematic because, of course, you're not going to be able to copy formulas from left to right through that structure because you're going to have different formulas in the years 
when you're summing up the quarters than you are in the quarters. And so we always, you know, ad advise, you know, the people we're teaching to avoid that structure um, at all costs. And so typically what you'd want to do is determine what is the, the ultimate most granular periodicity that you need. And in, in the case of FP&A models, it's usually almost always monthly. So then you build the entire structure, uh, structure of the model monthly, and then you can just literally create a carbon copy of that tab or worksheet and label it as, say, and then you're using aggregation functions. Like in the course, we're using some if and some ifs um, for the most part to aggregate things up by quarter and by, it's a much better structure because then you can just, you can work down one column, build your formulas, and then copy them all straight across um, through the structure, faster and less prone to errors as well. And dynamic, right? If you, dynamic, if you change yeah. something in a particular month, it will carry across to forecast quarters and years mm -hmm. as well. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely it will. So, um, yeah, so a lot, of, a lot of the people, when we see that structure of like four quarters to a year, four quarters to a year, that kind of structure, it's... Um, it's not that they're good model builders, but sometimes they just haven't seen what, what good looks like, or they haven't looked at the other structures and the other ways of doing it. You mentioned the income statement. You mentioned the cash flow statement. Is there anything to do with the balance sheet in this? We didn't include a balance sheet in this course. It can. We wanted to keep it kind of lean and sort of just focused on financial planning and analysis. We often find that most of the analysis getting done around the income statement and the cash flow statement, sort of evaluating the profitability and evaluating the cash flow of the company. But definitely, um, you know, for those that you know want practice at you know three statement modeling, we have a three statement modeling course, and we have an an intro to three statement modeling course as well, and and both are just wonderful courses. And if you haven't practiced on building a three statement model, it's it's really really great practice. Of course, as you know. It can be very, very hard <laughs> to link together a three statement model and get it to balance. You know, it doesn't always balance on the first shot, but then you need you need the muscles to be able to detect where it's wrong and, and fix it. Yeah, I've had that experience. I've done one recently, you know, for a, a public company. And um, I, I kind of I I got it to balance on the first try. And it, it, but it was it was only because I took my time going through it. I didn't speed. I think when when people are doing these sort of models, they tend to run through them really quickly for some reason. And that's where mm -hmm. the mistakes creep in, right? But um, we discussed this in the model design uh, podcast that we did. If you take some time up front to carefully design the model and then um, go through it in kind of like a non-hasty manner, you'll, 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 you'll end up okay um, mm -hmm. in the first or second attempt. Yeah, so, definitely. It's definitely something that you 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 want to you want to learn at some point at some point in your career. If you're serious about financial modeling, you need to learn that. The other thing that we that we look at in that course is um, how to avoid creating balance sheets that always balance. So so typically it's done in retained earnings. Someone will say, "Oh, retained earnings. Well, that must be all the assets minus the liabilities minus every other piece of equity the company has," and that'll always balance. And that's sure, something sure. definitely use a plug number. Yeah. So, so we want to encourage everyone to build the balance sheet in such a way that properly, so it will actually detect errors, not always show you a balance under under any circumstance. But yeah, a little bit off topic, but interesting because we're talking about the financial statements. Yeah, sure, no, no, sure. If, if somebody kind of goes through the course and like, hey, where's the balance sheet and how, how do you forecast a balance sheet? We have a course for that too. We said it's our three statement modeling courses, the intro and the more uh, advanced course, then which is good because people may not know that. So excellent. This course will be published uh, soon, I believe, you know, in uh, next Very week. Soon. I don't have an exact day, but it's it yeah. maybe live, you know, within days, I'd say. Excellent. Excellent. So I'm looking forward to that going live. I'm looking forward to our um, upcoming discussion on data visualization. Give people a sneak preview. <laughs> and well, thank you very much again for your time, Duncan. Thanks, Sim. Much appreciated. Bye. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the conversation. FinPod is brought to you by Corporate Finance Institute, the number one rated online provider of finance and banking training, certifications, and productivity tools.